It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 126th Commencement Convocation of Morehouse College. I invite you now to look at the screen where you may view the pageantry as your son makes his way with his classmates to the Century Campus. The front of the line will be moving through a magnificent corridor, a human corridor formed by the Morehouse College faculty and by members of the alumni reunion classes. There you see the gate, you see the alumni reunion classes in the white top hats, and you see the faculty on the opposite side, both are form forming a corridor. There you see at the front of the line, drummers in the African is celebrating 51 years of outstanding service at Morehouse College. Immediately behind Dr. Johnson, who is the Mace Bearer, is the Provost and Senior Vice President, Dr. Weldon Jackson. And there you see him immediately behind the drummers. Are you ready for commencement? All right. The graduates with the highest and second highest grade point averages are named as valedictorian and salutatorian respectively. These two seniors, these two students are in line following the senior class marshals. There they are entering the gate. The epitome of academic excellence at Morehouse College. 4.0 and 3.98 for every year they have been here making A's and A's and A's. Our graduates are matriculating, or did matriculate in academic divisions. The first division banner that you will see, if, you have, if it has not shown yet, uh, is for the Division of Humanities and Social Sciences, chaired by Dr. Terry Mills. Later, you will see the banner of the Division of Science and Mathematics, chaired by Dr. John K. Haynes and the banner of the Division of Business and Economics, chaired by Dr. John Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2010 graduating class of Morehouse College. And now the ringing of the bell by the founder's representative, the Reverend Dr. Woodrow Miller, Jr., which will be followed by the evocation by Rabbi Neil Saul Sandler, senior rabbi at Ahavav Hakim Synagogue, Atlanta, Georgia. Good morning. I am Woodrow Miller, Jr., pastor of Harmony Baptist Church in Augusta, Georgia. 
the second home of that institution that would one day become Morehouse College. The ringing of the bell from the first church, O Springfield Baptist Church in Augusta, where Morehouse was originated, was also the clarion call of our founder, the Reverend William Jefferson White, who convened the first Equal Rights Convention in 1866. And that history has cast a long shadow at Morehouse. As the founder's representative, I am honored to announce and declare that the 143rd school year of Morehouse College is now closed, and the 126th commencement exercise is now in order. morning to all. Blessed is the one and the ones who have given us life, who have helped to sustain us, and who have enabled us to reach this wonderful moment in our lives. As we begin this Morehouse College 2010 commencement service this morning, we offer heartfelt gratitude to all of the powerful forces in our lives our loved ones and friends who've urged us on and who have supported us throughout our studies in past years and in our years here at Morehouse College. We express wonder and gratitude for the gifts we have been given and nurtured ourselves, for the gifts of reason, curiosity, discernment, and patience, all of which have helped us to reach this sublime moment. As this celebration of learning and academic achievements now begins, I pray that each of us will recognize the potential of this commencement. May it be the beginning of a new stage in our lives as curious, caring, and successful lifelong learners. Holy One of all, as we strive to constantly be aware of your presence in our lives, we are especially uplifted in this moment as we stand in your majestic presence, every day you challenge and empower us to bring healing to your world. As we continue our studies, enter our chosen professional fields, and pursue our dreams, I pray that we shall never know complacency. Let us know contentment, but let us also be disturbed, disturbed enough about the injustices and the incompleteness of your world in which we live, so that we will never, ever tire of seeking to improve it. You beckon to us each and every day. The divine spirit within each of us calls out, listen to it, and act. From this day forward, may the words of our mouths and the actions of our hands reflect well on this fine institution, and may all of our efforts bring blessing to you, to your world, and to your name. Amen. Please stand for the presentation of colors, followed by the singing of the Star Spangled Banner, and lift every voice and sing led by the world-renowned Morehouse College Glee Club under the direction of Dr. David Mora, Morehouse College Class of 1980, and accompanied by Dr. David Oliver, College Organist.
Morehouse College with a proclamation for rebirth and renewal, for revival and change. As he began to actualize his vision for the institution to move to even greater heights. So whether he is a CNN Essence panelist at the Congressional Black Caucus, or whether he's being named 2010 Alumnus of the Year by the University of Chicago Divinity School, or whether he is serving as a consultant on policy initiatives with Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, or whether he is serving on a board as a board member of the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra or the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce, or whether he is being appointed to the historically black college's Capital Finance and Advisory Board by the United States Secretary of Education, Ann Duncan, or whether he is just strolling across the campus and joining the men of Morehouse in meaningful conversation, moving them to a more global perspective with a social conscience. Wherever you see him, wherever you find him, you can be sure that he is always devising new constructs and new possibilities for excellence at this institution. He is the 10th president of Morehouse College, a member of the class of 1975. Ladies and gentlemen, our president, Dr. Robert Michael Franklin, Jr. Thank you, Dr. Watts, Mr. Chairman, other members of the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, the members of the Platform Party, and other distinguished guests, alumni, and friends of Morehouse College, members of our distinguished faculty and diligent staff, to family and friends of our graduates, and especially to the members of the graduating class of 2010. Welcome. I welcome you all to this 126th commencement convocation. This has been an an another exceptional year in the history of Morehouse College. Among our out outstanding achievements, in August, the Morehouse College Entrepreneurship Center was named the National Entrepreneurial Advocate of the Year during the National Minority Enterprise Development Week Gala in Washington, D.C. Later in that year, Gary Locke, U.S. Secretary of Commerce, called the Morehouse College Entrepreneurship Center an example of how the U.S. can stimulate job growth. I'm delighted today to announce a $3 million gift to the Ray Charles Performing Arts Center from the Ray Charles Foundation. And you'll all be invited to a ribbon-cutting ceremony for that new center as we open it in September. Last September, the Coca-Cola Company contributed more than $7.2 million to the four Atlanta University Center Consortium Schools and to the Robert W. Woodruff Library. Approximately 140 Morehouse students benefited from the $1.7 million in scholarship money that went to Morehouse College. Dr. Walter Fluker of this faculty as editor and the team of the Leadership Center at Morehouse published the first volume of the historic Howard Thurman Papers Project in December of 2009. The volume is titled, The Papers of Howard Washington Thurman, My People Need Me. Dr. Thurman was a distinguished graduate of Morehouse College who influenced Dr. Mays, Dr. King, and generations of Morehouse men. The Morehouse Maroon Tigers, senior offensive lineman and civil engineering major, Ramon Harewood was drafted in the sixth round by the National Football League's Baltimore Ravens. Our 
Chairman Davis, an old football star who earned his nickname Flash on the gridiron, was especially pleased by that development for Morehouse. And for the second consecutive year, the Morehouse Maroon Tigers tennis, track and field, and golf teams each finished their seasons with the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference with championship titles. We are pleased to announce this morning that we are graduating our first class of the John H. Hopp Scholars. This program was funded by the Department of Defense and provides tuition for students pursuing careers in science, technology, and mathematics. It's named in honor of the late John H. Hopps, Jr., our former provost and senior vice president for academic affairs, and formerly deputy undersecretary of the Defense Department. Dr. Hopps is a native of Houston, Texas and was a member of the Morehouse class of 1958 and served here as provost with President Emeritus Walter Massey. Indeed, this is a very special occasion for everyone assembled here today and especially for the young men who've worked so long and hard to earn their degrees. During the past several years, they've met the academic challenges of the classroom. They have moved successfully along the journey of life toward the goals that they have set for themselves and toward the goals that this village has projected upon them. And today, today, they have earned the title of being forever after called Morehouse men. At this time, let me ask another Morehouse man to extend greetings a member of the class of 1956 and chairman of the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, Mr. Willie Flash Davis. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Secretary, platform guests, members of the graduating class. I trust you will recall that I spoke with you on Friday at the Rite of Passage. I know you remember that I spoke to you yesterday at Baccalaureate. And it occurs to me that there was one thing that I did not say on those other occasions, and that is congratulations. And so I say to you today on behalf of the Moaz College Board of Trustees, congratulations and welcome to the Alumni Association of Moaz College. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Davis. At this time, we invite all Morehouse trustees to stand and be recognized. The Board of Trustees of Morehouse College. And now we are fortunate to have sharing the podium with us today one of our distinguished alumni who has established himself throughout the realms of higher education as a leading voice. In September 2009, President Barack Obama named Morehouse alumnus John Sylvanus Wilson, a member of the class of 1979, to lead the White House initiative on historically black colleges and universities. This office is designed to strengthen educational opportunities as well as promote excellence, innovation, and sustainability in the historically black college and university community. Before being appointed to this position, John served as executive dean at George Washington University's Virginia campus and spent 16 years at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he served as the director of foundation relations and assistant provost. John will come now to the podium and bring greetings on behalf of the White House Initiative on HBCUs. John, we welcome you back home. President Franklin, Secretary Gates, platform guests, good morning to all and congratulations to the class of 2010. I bring you greetings 
from both the White House and the Department of Education where I can assure you our HBCUs have friends like we have never had before. When I, when I joined the White House team last July, President Obama had established a national goal to have the highest proportion of college graduates in the world by the year 2020. And let's just say that was a time when a lot of folk were curious about this administration's commitment to HBCUs. Well, there is simply no question that this White House knows that we cannot reach our 2020 goal without strengthening our HBCUs. And I want to use my two minutes to illustrate our firm commitment to HBCUs measured in treasure, time, and talent. Now, you might ask, where is the treasure? Well, we will invest a billion new dollars in black colleges over the next decade. We will also add $40 billion to Pell Grant funding as well. That more than doubles the Pell Grant funds. And we have established other competitive funds for our HBCUs to tap and grow. So that is where the treasure is. Our grand vision is to see HBCU cathedrals in our lifetime. Second, you might ask, where is the time? Well, one example of this is, in addition to Defense Secretary Gates serving as graduation speaker here today, joined, I might add, by my 1979 classmate and good friend, Jay Johnson, and in addition to Ambassador Susan Rice, delivering the commencement address at Spelman later today. This HBCU graduation season has also featured Education Secretary Arne Duncan at Xavier University, NASA Administrator Charles Bolden at Houston Tillotson College, Joint Chiefs Chairman Mike Mullen at Florida A&M, Domestic Policy Director Melody Barnes at Virginia Union, Senior Advisor Valerie Jarrett at Morgan State University, First Lady Michelle Obama at University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, and President Barack Obama at Hampton University. That's where the time is. And, and by the way, yours truly delivered the commencement addresses at Wiley College, Wilberforce University, and Harris Stowe State University. Finally, Finally, where is the talent? Well, that's you, the graduating class of 2010. We invest in our HBCUs in order to yield better institutions and better graduates who can make a better world. But since our investment is not nearly enough, I'll close with this. By now, you all know that President Obama is big on accountability and responsibility. And in my office, that means we are concerned about HBCU alumni giving. Now, I won't get into the numbers, but we tend to be below the national average, and there is no HBCU that has ever had 50% of its alumni giving. So I want to challenge this 2010 class to begin to change that. Morehouse has added to your talent, and now I want you to join the Obama team in giving of your treasure and your time. So as I leave here, I challenge you to lift as you climb, give as you earn, build our institutions as you build your life, and most of all, I challenge you to be steadfast, honest, and true to old Morehouse and her ideals and in all things that you do. good for Morehouse to have a voice like that in the White House. John Morehouse College is proud of you. We are, continue to thank you for your leadership and keep up the good work. One of Morehouse College's greatest assets is our alumni. Morehouse has a proud tradition of producing outstanding leaders. That is our brand. Morehouse men like Nobel Prize laureate Martin Luther King Jr former Surgeon General David Satcher, United Negro College Fund President Michael Lomax, 
Grammy-nominated gospel singer Canton Jones, Atlanta's first African-American mayor, Maynard Jackson, former Secretary of Health and Human Services, Louis Sullivan, Olympic gold medalist, Edwin Moses, Academy Award-nominated actor Samuel L. Jackson, acclaimed filmmaker Spike Lee, CNN contributor Jamal Simmons, and political strategist Lamel McMorris are profound testaments to the fulfillment of this college's mission. Today, we have the honor of recognizing one of our oldest alumni in reunion this year, Richard Caesar, a proud member of the class of 1940, who today celebrates his 70th year as a graduate of Morehouse College. Alumnus Caesar, who is now 92 years young. That deserves a standing ovation. <laughs> Alumnus Caesar, 92 years old, led a distinguished career, first as one of the original Tuskegee Airmen. <laughs> and later as a prominent dentist in San Francisco, California. We thank him for being here to celebrate this very special day with his lovely wife, Jerry. Thank you, alumnus Caesar. You inspire us all. <clears throat> Celebrating their 65th reunion, we recognize renowned educator and pediatrician, Dr. Homer Nash, if you'd stand, distinguished physician, Dr. R. Jerome Williams, and the men of the class of 1945. Will you please stand? They're watching on television and live web stream, no doubt. And now celebrating their 60th reunion, we invite the first African-American pilot for American Airlines, Albert Price, renowned chemist, August Curley, to stand with the distinguished men of the class of 1950. Gentlemen, please stand. The class of 1950. <laughs> Celebrating their 55th reunion, we ask former mayor of Wilmington, Delaware, Delaware, James Sills, noted authors Ira Moreland and Samuel Wilson, and the men of the class of 1955 to please stand and be recognized. 1955. Each year here at Morehouse, a very special group of men is inducted into the Golden Tiger Society. This year, we invite the class of 1960, celebrating their 50th anniversary, our Golden Tigers class. If to you, you would please stand at this time. Thank you, Ben Du Logan, Charles Stevens, and other members of that distinguished class. And now, history professor Marcellus Barksdale, philanthropist Robert Steele, and the class of 1965 celebrating their 45th reunion, will you please stand? We now invite Morehouse College trustee Jim Moss, former ambassador to Nigeria Howard Jeter, business executives Sam Young and Charles Allen, and the distinguished men of the class of 1970 to stand and be recognized as they celebrate their 40th reunion, the class of 1970.
like you to know that these last three classes we've noted were all here during the turbulent years in this city and this nation as America was undergoing change, led in part by Morehouse alumnus, class of 1948, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. This past week, we inaugurated and named a street on the Clark Atlanta University campus where the former SNCC headquarters, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, sat. And I hope you will, before you leave town, go over just a block and a half from here and see SNCC Way. But we thank the men during the 1960s and 70s who led social change in Atlanta. And now I take personal pride in welcoming my fellow classmates. President of Capital City Bank, George Andrews, noted physician Michael Lindsay, renowned scientist Carlton Truesdale, and the men of the distinguished class of 1975 as we celebrate our 35th reunion year. Gentlemen, please stand. We now invite Morehouse Glee Club director, Dr. David Morrow, Morehouse head basketball coach, Grady Brewer, and his college roommate, L.B. Hodges III, and both of them have sons, Ryan and Donis, respectively, who are graduating to with today's class. And the mighty members of the class of 1980, celebrating their 30th reunion, please stand. Renowned Pastor Claude Alexander, President of Three Bass Media Group Kevin Ross, Wall Street Executive Willie Woods, and the members of the class of 1985 celebrating their 25th reunion. Please stand, gentlemen. Class of 1985. And now, with the members of the class of 1990 celebrating your 20th anniversary, stand. The class of 1995 celebrating the 15th anniversary. The class of 2000 celebrating their 10th anniversary. And the class of 2005, these gentlemen are still paying off stu student loans, in your fifth anniversary, will you stand? Welcome home, gentlemen. Last night, I'd like you to know that those classes combined presented gifts to Morehouse College totaling $1,002,000. Thank you, gentlemen, for supporting your alma mater. Dr. Wilson, these men are already meeting your challenge. Marching with the alumni reunion classes today are Morehouse alumni who served in the military. Some are even dressed in the uniforms they wore during the time they were serving their country. Not many of these alumni wear the suits they wore as Morehouse students today. But gentlemen who served in the military, we ask you to now stand and be recognized. Finally, I'd like to ask all Morehouse alumni if you would stand. The magnificent men of Morehouse College, Morehouse men throughout this gathered throng. Thank you, gentlemen. Welcome home. And now I ask members of the Morehouse College faculty, and I'd like to ask first the deans of science and math, Dean Haynes. Dean John Williams of Business, Dean Terry Mills of Humanities, and to ask all of the chairs of our departments, if you would stand first, the chairs of the departments, and now the entire Morehouse College faculty, please stand together. This is the faculty of a great college.
To the extent that we have been discovered as one of America's most grueling college, it's thanks to them. I'd like to ask all administrators and staff if you would stand. The people who make the trains run on time, we are grateful. We have several dedicated faculty members who will be retiring this year. Dr. Alton Hornsby, professor of history, will be retiring from Morehouse College at the end of December after 42 years of service. Dr. Hornsby, would you please stand and be recognized? Thank you, Dr. Hornsby. Dr. Robert Bozeman, president, pr professor of mathematics, he does preside over at mathematics as well, will be retiring from Morehouse College at the end of this month after 37 years of service. Dr. Bozeman, please stand and be recognized. The Teaching in Excellence Award is funded by the Vulcan Materials Company in conjunction with the Georgia Foundation for Independent Colleges. Under this initiative, the 2009-2010 Morehouse College Faculty Member of the Year for Outstanding Teaching was awarded to Dr. Gloria DeCuna, Professor of Modern Foreign Languages. Dr. DeCuna, will you please stand and be recognized? And now I ask the Miss Maroon and White Court of 2010-2011, if you would please stand and be recognized. We'd like to introduce some of our other special guests who are with us this morning. Ingrid Saunders-Jones, Chairperson of the Coca-Cola Foundation, and Senior Vice President of the Coca-Cola Company. Would you stand and be recognized? Ingrid, we love you. We know that you love Morehouse and the Atlanta University Center. Dr. Samuel Du Bois Cook, President Emeritus of Dillard University in New Orleans and a member of the Morehouse class of 1948. Would you please stand? President Cook just published a terrific book on the life and times of Benjamin Mays that you can find in our bookstore later today. Mr. Dan Cathy, President of Chick-fil-A Incorporated, please stand. Thank you, Dan. My students have consumed a good deal of your product and washed it down with Coca-Cola. I'd like to ask Congresswoman Maxine Waters, representative from the 36th District of California. Maxine Waters, we welcome you, we salute you. I'd like to ask Vivian Creighton Bishop, wife of Congressman Sanford Bishop, if you would please stand. Now my fellow Atlanta University Center President, Dr. John E. Maupin, President of the Morehouse School of Medicine. Welcome, John. I ask my wife, the lovely First Lady of Morehouse College, Dr. Cheryl Franklin, please stand. Yvonne King Gloucester, wife of the late Morehouse President Emeritus Hugh Morris Gloucester, will you please stand? You just heard those men who were here during the years of Hugh Gloucester. Whenever he stood, we all shouted, Hugh, Hugh. So we're not booing, we're calling Hugh. Well, Shirley Ann Massey, the wife of the ninth president of Morehouse College, Walter Eugene Massey, please stand and be recognized. Welcome home, Shirley. We love you. Well, Ms. Eileen Maupin, the wife of Morehouse School of Medicine president, Dr. John Maupin, please stand and be recognized.
At this time, we will recognize members of the diplomatic corps and council generals representing countries from throughout this world and who are here in Atlanta. If you would please stand all together. Diplomats, council generals, welcome. I now recognize our class salutatorium. Each year we have a robust competition among our students and the selection process is very close. This year our salutatorian maintained an impressive 3.98 cumulative grade point average, coming a close second to our valedictorian. And I have to tell you, there is nothing quite like being in a student body where the young men's energy is focused on academic competition and excellence. It's my pleasure to introduce the 2010 salutatorian, Christopher Gerald Neely. Chris, as you stand, come. Chris is a native of Stone Mountain, Georgia. He is the son of Carl and Brenda Neely, whom I will ask to stand momentarily. As a member of the Atlanta Consortium Dual Degree Engineering Program, he will be graduating today with a Bachelor of Science in Applied Physics and a minor in mathematics from Morehouse, and a degree in civil engineering from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Chris's civic activities at Morehouse include membership in Phi Beta Kappa, National Honor Society, Tau Beta Pi, National Engineering Honor Society, Beta Kappa Chi, National Scientific Honor Society, Pi Mu Epsilon, National Mathematics Honor Society, Chi Epsilon, National Civil Engineering Honor Society, National Society of Black Engineers, and the Society of Physics Students, Optical Society of America. And I'd be remiss if I failed to mention that Chris is a Project Space Strategic Preparedness Advancing Careers in Engineering Scholar. Project Space was established in 1989 with a multi-million dollar grant from NASA to help increase the number of African American students entering science and engineering professions and pursuing related doctoral degrees. His commitment to community service includes mentoring middle school students from DeKalb County, exposing them to robotics, and tutoring them in math and science, tutoring students at Frederick Douglass High School, and working with the ACT Pre program at Ypsilanti High School. He is currently working full time as a field engineer with Exxon Mobil Pipeline Company in Houston. We need you in the petroleum industry, brother. Chris, I ask that you come forward now. Thank you, Chris, on a job well done. And now with the members of Chris's family, would you all please stand and be recognized? This year, Morehouse College is pleased to recognize a person who led his class in academic standing and rose to the rank of valedictorian. He has achieved an impressive cumulative grade point average of 4.0 and is deserving of this time-honored acknowledgement. Valedictorian Jimmy Bizet Strong II, a native of Memphis, Tennessee, is the son of Ann Strong Jenkins and Jimmy Bizet Strong. As a Morehouse student, 
He was active in the academic community and displayed his leadership skills through involvement in civic organizations. A Sydney pre-law scholar, an Institute for International Public Policy fellow, a Bank of America scholar, an Adams scholar, Jimmy was also executive director of the Morehouse Mentoring Program, president of the Golden Key International Honor Society, president of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, and a student representative on the Morehouse Accreditation Committee. Jimmy's scholastic excellence extends far beyond the gates of Morehouse. He completed an international business and marketing program in Rome, Italy, and an intensive Spanish language concentration in Santiago, Dominican Republic. And he attended the International Political Economy Institute at the University of Maryland's Graduate School of Public Policy. Jimmy has addressed audiences in the General Assembly of the United Nations, the conference room of the director of the United States Peace Corps, and the executive board war room of the World Bank. After completing the crux of his Morehouse curriculum in three years, Jimmy decided to use the first semester of his senior year to lay the foundation for Renaissance Academy, a charter school based on the Renaissance skills that Morehouse teaches. Through the Jimmy Strong Lecture Series, he teaches students from elementary to high school the importance of Renaissance skills, skills that range from proper attire and etiquette to public speaking and resume writing. In his final semester at Morehouse College, Jimmy tracked legislation at the Georgia House of Representatives for three offices, economic development and tourism, banks and banking, and regulated industries. He has accepted an offer to continue working at the intersection of government and business. Before continuing his education, Jimmy will work in Washington, D.C. for the International Trade and Finance Division of the Library of Congress's Congressional Research Service. In fall 2011, Jimmy will attend Harvard Law School to earn a law degree coupled with an MBA through Harvard's joint degree program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage a brother who is scary smart, the valedictorian of the class of 2010, Mr. Jimmy Strong. President Franklin, members of the Board of Trustees and other platform guests, faculty, staff, and especially the men of the graduating class of 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, the book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is a time and a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Today we come as newly minted Morehouse men to survey the harvest, to pluck up what has been planted, and to register with that inimitable entity called time, to assess a journey that, for most of us, began four years ago. We also come this morning to turn another page, to say goodbye to yesterday, and to greet tomorrow with a confident smile. For we recognize that time does indeed fly on what Frederick Schiller calls restless pinions, and that our freshman year is but a mere corridor away, a year of adjustment, and a year of severing ties of home and bonding with this new, interesting, and challenging place called Morehouse. Let go of the handlebars and let him ride, our parents were admonished, and we set out. We set out on wobbly wheels at first, and then we began to ride. Brother-sister exchange, hall meetings, the first day of classes, first hump Wednesday, first market Friday, midterm exams that came too soon. 
that surprising snowfall in Atlanta, and then Christmas. The semester was over. And before we knew it, the second semester had come and gone. Turn the pages and let the junior year flit by with young men ready to test their mettle and fix everything that we thought needed fixing. Some called us wise fools, but what did they know? Because we knew everything. <laughs> Turn the page and let the junior year flit by with young men who now realized that we didn't know what we thought we knew. We traveled and studied abroad. We joined organizations. We engaged in internships and summer jobs. And we began to make plans for life after Morehouse. We developed and led initiatives. We provided community service wherever we found the need. Then, without fanfare or warning, senior year was upon us. Suddenly, the words of Mays, Martin, Malcolm, and Thurman began to make sense, far beyond the rhetoric of memorized plaudits. We saw the world differently, differently than the hazy glow of rose-colored glasses through which we peered as innocent freshmen. The real world stared us in the face like a crouching tiger, a world we were soon to enter without the comfort and safety of a Morehouse college. Again, we would be alone. We had to constantly stifle those nameless fears, fears that made us reluctant to leave dear old Morehouse, yet we were encouraged. We were the benefactors of an immense progeny not experienced by any generation before us. We served under the capable leadership of the first African-American president, Mr. Barack Obama. The seemingly impossible now seemed only a short distance away. So today, as we turn another page, we must pause to say thank you. Thank you to our president. Thank you to our administrators. Thank you to the staff of Morehouse College. We must pause to say thank you to our teachers. Teachers who lifted our sullen gaze to higher vistas of intellectual discourse. Teachers who refused to accept mediocrity. Teachers who knew that we were capable of excellence. Teachers who did as Confucius bade them do. They showed us the way to the gate, but they refused to enter with us. And yes, we must pause to say thank you to our parents. Thank you to our guardians. Thank you to our caretakers and our caregivers who when it was all said and done made a way for us when there was no way. We are who, what, and where we are today because your prayers kept us. Your enduring faith covered us. How can we ever adequately say thank you to all of you? We say with every ounce of reassurance we can muster, your seed has not fallen on fallow ground, your words have not fallen on deaf ears, and your counsel has not approached stony hearts. We go today fleet of feet because we know that the world awaits our service and our influence. We also go with a solemn promise to all of you. We will pay forward the priceless upbringing unforgettable teachings and unyielding urgings that crowned every step of our way. And when the world makes the request, as did Josiah Gilbert Holland, God send us men. The class of 2010 will step forward and say, here we are, with strong minds, great hearts, true faith, and steady hands. Here we are. Men whom the lust of office does not kill. Men whom the spoils of office cannot buy. Here we are. Tall men. Stone crowned men. Men who live above the crowd in, in public duty and in private thinking. Here we are. More house men ready to make a difference. Here we are. More house men ready to put the neighbor back in hood. Ready to change the world. Here we are. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Congratulations on a job well done. You are an outstanding example of a Morehouse man 
issuing the clarion call to service, academic excellence, ethical leadership, mentoring, and community service. Let me ask the members of Jimmy Strong's family to please stand and be recognized. John Hops, you see this building named in his honor, the Technology Tower, served as our provost, served as deputy undersecretary of the Department of Defense, distinguished member of the class of 1958. His wife, Dr. June Hops, is here. Dr. Hops, would you please stand and be recognized? We thank you, June. Dr. Robert Michael Gates was sworn in on December 18, 2006 as the 22nd Secretary of Defense of the United States of America. He made history when President Barack Obama asked him to remain in that office in 2008. A native of Kansas, Secretary Gates received his bachelor's degree from the College of William and Mary, his master's degree in history from Indiana University, and his doctorate in Russian and Soviet history from Georgetown University. Secretary Gates served as an intelligence professional for 27 years, serving six presidents. And during that period, he spent nearly nine years at the National Security Council and in the White House, where he served four presidents of both political parties. Before entering his present post, Dr. Gates was president of Texas A&M University, the nation's seventh largest university. Prior to assuming the Texas A&M presidency on August 1, 2002, he served as interim dean of the George Bush School of Government and Public Service at Texas A&M from 1999 to 2001. I am honored, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome to Morehouse College and to present to you at this time a profile in American courage, our country's Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Robert M. Gates. Thank you, President Franklin, for that warm introduction. I must say that when I was president of Texas A&M, I always used my authority to ensure that I spoke before the student speaker, never after. <laughs> A very tough act to follow. Members of the board, families of the graduates, faculty, distinguished guests, it is a true honor and privilege to be with you today. Let me start by singling out my fellow recipients of honorary awards and degrees. Dr. Walter E. Massey, President Emeritus of Morehouse and Chairman of the Board of Bank of America. Dr. Benjamin Franklin Payton, who is retiring as President of Tuskegee University after 28 years at the helm. And Congressman Sanford Bishop, a veteran of the U.S. Army, who has demonstrated untiring support for our men and women in uniform, and especially our nation's military families. There are also many others here to thank. Chief among them are all the family members who have joined us. It is an awesome sight to behold from this stage. As best I can tell, about 10,000 strong. You outnumber the graduates by 20 to 1. That is a testament to how important you have been on this journey, to how much your graduates have relied on your network of love and support these past few years brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, graduates, I think you should stand and give your support network a standing ovation.
And finally, the class of 2010, congratulations on this great achievement. I know that most of you are thinking one thing at this point. I hope he keeps this short. <laughs> Having presided over 39 commencements when I was at Texas A&M, I learned the importance of brevity on occasions such as this. To paraphrase President Abraham Lincoln, I have no doubt you will little note nor long remember what is said here. <laughs> I suppose today, as you finish one chapter in your life and move on to the next, I'm supposed to give you some advice on how to succeed. I could quote the billionaire J. Paul Getty, who offered sage wisdom on how to get rich. He said, rise early, work hard, strike oil. <laughs> Or the film director Alfred Hitchcock, who explained there's nothing to winning, really. That is, if you happen to be blessed with a keen eye, an agile mind, and no scruples whatsoever. <laughs> well, instead of those messages, my only two words of advice for success today come from two great women. First, opera star Beverly Sills, who once said, there are no shortcuts to any place worth going. And second, from Katherine Hepburn, who wrote, Life is to be lived. If you have to support yourself, you would bloody well find some way that is going to be interesting. And you don't do that by sitting around wondering about yourself. The truth of the matter is, there really are no tricks or shortcuts or straight lines. In fact, it's often those times when you think you know exactly what you're going to do and what you're doing that a new opportunity comes along and disrupts all of your well-laid plans. I have a lot of experience with this. When I started college in 1961, I wanted to be a doctor, a career choice that lasted until the end of my first semester, when I received a D in calculus. My father called and said, tell me about the D. And I said, Dad, the D was a gift. <laughs> Dr. Franklin tells me I'm in good company while here Martin Luther King Jr. got more C's than anything else. Though there may be no straight paths in life, you will nonetheless need to have some anchor points, a set of inner values or a higher purpose to guide you. Here at Morehouse, you have discovered those. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you have learned about the storied history of this great institution, from mayors, congressmen, and civil rights leaders to filmmakers and titans of industry, Morehouse men are making an impact on their communities, locally, nationally, and globally. I would note, as Dr. Franklin has, that this is the first class to graduate HOPS Defense Research Scholars, and I know the recipients of this prestigious distinction will make a valuable contribution to our nation in the years to come. President Franklin had it right when he said that Morehouse cannot be reduced to words or data since you are, after all, following in the footsteps of Mays and Martin and Maynard. Outside of the classroom, you have also excelled in your endeavors. As President Franklin noted, last week your golf team won the Minority Collegiate Golf Championship, and the Flying Maroon Tigers won the South Region Track and Field Championship, as well as their fifth league title in a row, raising the question, are you ever going to let any other school win again? <laughs> Members of your class, helped elect the President of the United States. You established a charter school based on the House's Renaissance skills. You worked to alleviate the suffering of the Haitian people in their hour of need, and maybe even found time to stomp the yard or snap and drive with the House of Funk. I'll bet that's the first time a Secretary of Defense has ever said that. Through all of this, you have learned and lived the values this school prides itself on, caring beyond self, devotion to one's community and fellow citizens, and preparedness to serve, all fundamental to our democracy in this great experiment we call the United States of America. That is direct, directly related to the subject I want to speak to you about briefly this morning, the obligation of service and citizenship in our country. We hear a lot in the United States about our rights as citizens, but what we don't hear enough about from our political leaders, commentators, and editorial writers are our responsibilities as citizens. 
I know you're familiar with what Benjamin Mays said on the subject of service. It is not what you keep, but what you give that makes you happy. We make our living by what we get. We make our life by what we give. In recent years, I've been blessed to work closely with two Morehouse men who have chosen a life of service. Both are here today. Dr. Rodney McClendon, class of 1990, crossed this stage 20 years ago this month. He was my chief of staff, confidant, counselor, and friend when I was president of Texas A&M. As a senior executive at the University of North Texas, he is a rising star in that university system. Rodney, please stand and be recognized. Jay Johnson, class of 79, is one of the nation's preeminent lawyers. Last year, he left Wall Street to return to the Department of Defense as general counsel. In that role, he is lead lawyer for the department and responsible for overseeing more than 10,000 lawyers, dealing with some of the nation's most complex legal issues. Jay also has become my friend, my confidant, and counselor. Jay, would you please stand? I'm sure both of these great Morehouse men can attest to the fact that public life has its share of downsides, whether it's the criticism that comes from being in the public eye or the sometimes comically inefficient reality of our political system. But there is another aspect of public service about which Americans hear very little. The idealism, the joy, the satisfaction, and the fulfillment. My own views have been formed by what I have seen and experienced since entering government 44 years ago, and especially in the last few years at the Department of Defense. Every day I have the honor of interacting with men and women who have volunteered to serve our nation during a time of war, setting aside their dreams to protect yours, putting the security of their countrymen above their own lives. In just a few minutes, I'll have the great honor of commissioning seven new officers in the United States Navy and Air Force who join an inspiring roster of young Americans who have answered their country's call. Millions of other Americans have chosen careers in civil service, policemen, firemen, teachers, nurses, elected and appointed local, state, and national officials, and many, many more. If in an unguarded moment you ask the public service servants I have known, what their motivation was, you'd learn that no matter how tough or jaded, they mostly were and are, in their heart of hearts, romantics and idealists and optimists. You see, we who have taken this path actually believe we can make a difference, that we can change the lives of others for the better, that we can make a positive difference in the life of our country. Consider how much has occurred during my lifetime. I grew up in Wichita, Kansas in the 1940s and 1950s, not exactly a part of the country on the cutting edge of social change at the time. But just a couple of hours away in Topeka, Kansas, there was a girl almost my exact age named Linda Brown. In 1951, when she was in the third grade, her father tried to enroll her in the all-white school just down the road. After being denied, Reverend Oliver Brown sued the local Board of Education in a case that came to be known as Brown versus Board. A few years later, it was another son of Kansas, Dwight Eisenhower, who sent federal troops to Little Rock to enforce that Supreme Court decision and tear down once and for all the pernicious belief that a two-tiered society could ever be separate but equal. I think about that many times a week when I cross the Potomac River to visit the White House, a building originally constructed in part with slave labor and serve at the pleasure of our nation's 44th president, the first African-American commander-in-chief. I can tell you it is I can tell you it is an incredible and humbling experience, made possible only because millions of ordinary citizens fought for generations to uphold a truth we hold to be self-evident, that all men truly are created equal. No doubt ours is an imperfect nation that has been and always will be a work in progress. And so it falls to your generation to ensure that we continue along that path of progress. 
As President Obama has said, you must put your foot firmly into the current of history. The founders of Morehouse understood that, and its subsequent leaders never flagged in their determination to elevate this college from its humble beginnings in the basement of a nondescript Baptist church to the magisterial campus you know so well, the heartbeat of one of America's great cities. They created out of a limited effort to educate recently freed slaves a premier institution of higher education, a cauldron in which community and national leaders are forged. Directly in front of me and behind all of you is Graves Hall. When the cornerstone of that building was laid more than 120 years ago, the renowned Reverend Dr. C.T. Walker said, let the men who go from these walls prepared for high work publish the fame of this institution by their fixedness of purpose and their earnest desire to bless fallen humanity and write their name in bright letters in the temple of fame. You entered this place as men of Morehouse, and very shortly you will become Morehouse men. Do not ever forget what that means. Do not forget the legacy you are charged with upholding. Just look around you. We gather within shouting distance of buildings named after towering figures who made your presence possible. White, Robert, Graves, Kilgore, Hope, Archer, Sale, Douglas, Du Bois, King. And you are about to graduate under the watchful eyes of Dr. Benjamin Elijah Mays, whose likeness appropriately looks over us. The bodies of these men may have passed from this world, but their spirits remain in this place, and they remain in each and every one of you. Forevermore they will ask, no, they will demand that you live a life of honor and character and service, that you publish the fame of this great institution by your devotion to causes larger than yourself. I'll close with a quote from President John Adams from a letter he sent to one of his sons on this very subject. He wrote, public business, my son, must always be done by somebody or another. If wise men decline it, others will not. If honest men refuse it, others will not. And I would add, if Morehouse men turn away, others will not. And so I ask you, Morehouse cl College Class of 2010, Will the wise and honest among you come help us serve the American people? Thank you, congratulations, and good luck. Thank you, Secretary Gates, for your compelling remarks. I'm sure that the class of 2010 and everyone in our audience today has been inspired by your words and your clarion call and inspired by your life of service. Morehouse College will now confer honorary degrees. It is my privilege to present to you Secretary of Defense Robert M. Gates for the honorary degree, Doctor of Laws, Congressman Sanford D. Bishop for the Honorary Degree Doctor of Laws, and Dr. Benjamin F. Payton for the Honorary Degree Doctor of Humane Letters. I call your attention to their complete biographical sketches in your program. Secretary Gates, would you please come forward? Secretary Gates, for your leadership, commitment to our national security, and devotion to the citizens of the United States, we honor and salute you. Therefore, by the authority granted me by the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Laws with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereunto. Congratulations. Congressman Sanford D. Bishop, Jr., 
For more than 30 years, you have served the people of the state of Georgia, first as a member of the Georgia House of Representatives and later as a member of the state Senate. You have been an advocate for better jobs, better education, and a safe environment for the citizens of our great state. Since 1992, upon your election to the United States Congress, we have counted on your ability to work effectively with other elected officials to achieve a better quality of life for Americans. We respect your commitment to a balanced budget and honor you for your longstanding dedication to building political bridges. Congressman Sanford Bishop, for building a career that is focused on the representation of the Georgian public, we thank you. Therefore, by the authority granted to me by the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Laws with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereunto. Congratulations, Congressman Bishop. Dr. Benjamin Payton, will you please come forward? Dr. Benjamin Payton, as the president of Tuskegee University, you have demonstrated to our community the importance of strong academic leadership. You have grown the endowment exponentially and expanded the curriculum to include terminal degree programs in the engineering, and science disciplines. Dr. Payton, for the strides you have made in educating African American students and expanding the capacity of historically black colleges and universities, we offer our gratitude. Dr. Payton, we applaud your outstanding leadership, scholarly achievement, and unrelenting commitment to service. And we stand in awe of your lifelong dedication to education. Therefore, by the authority granted to me by the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Humane Letters with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. Congratulations, Dr. Payton. On another note, I should observe in conferring with President Emeritus Massey last night, we both suffered the humiliation of Morehouse presidents as Morehouse College's football team was defeated each year by the Tuskegee team in recent years. And so now, in a dramatic stroke of genius, Morehouse has made the Tuskegee president a Morehouse man. <laughs> Checkmate. Morehouse College prides itself on instilling in its students the desire to make meaningful contributions in their communities, as well as to the institution that nurtured them. And when our alumni and our friends engage in dedicated service, we are honored to recognize them for their noble endeavors. Today, for the first time, it is my very special privilege to present the Presidential Renaissance Medallion in acknowledgement of continued service to the college and to the global community. Dr. Walter E. Massey, will you come forward? This award, the highest issued by the president of the college, is presented to individuals who may have previously received an honorary degree but whose work continues to advance the good of Morehouse and the common good. The medallion which features the Morehouse College seal is encased in a maroon shadow box 
trimmed with black matting. Those who receive this honor will have proven their commitment to uplifting humanity and demonstrated excellence in all they do. Dr. Walter E. Massey, a distinguished member of the Morehouse College class of 1958, seems never to run out of ways to uphold the institution's legacy of excellence. As our ninth president, he conducted a record-breaking $118 million capital campaign. He oversaw campus improvements that include the John Hopes Jr. Technology Tower, the Otis Moss Jr. Residential Suites, the Leadership Center, and the Davidson House Center of Excellence. Before his 12-year tenure as president of Morehouse, Dr. Massey served the University of California system as provost and senior vice president for academic affairs. He is a former director of the National Science Foundation and served as vice president for research and a professor of physics at the University of Chicago. At Brown University, he was dean of the college and a professor of physics. Additionally, he was director of the Argonne National Laboratory and an assistant professor of physics at the University of Illinois. Dr. Massey, who recently retired from his term as chairman of the board of Bank of America, is a member of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. He has been honored by more than 30 institutions throughout this country and continues to support the higher education through his membership on the Gates Millennium Scholars Advisory Council and the National Commission on Mathematics and Science Teaching for the 21st Century. Dr. Walter Massey, in recognition of your ongoing contributions to Morehouse and to the community at large, it is my privilege to present to you the first Morehouse College Presidential Renaissance Medallion. Congratulations, Dr. Massey. Thank you very much, President Franklin. This is the highest honor I've ever received. It's nothing like being honored by your own, and Morehouse is my own. I believe this was the last class I actually admitted as president. So congratulations. Thank you, President Meredith Massey. We now come to the central purpose of these commencement exercises. <laughs> the awarding of degrees earned in course. The deans of the division will in turn present candidates for admittance to the various degrees offered by the college. President Franklin, I am pleased to present members of the class of 2010 who have been certified as well as those who will be certified as having completed the, pre the prescribed course of studies and in all institutional obligations, meriting the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science. In accordance with the recommendation of the Morehouse faculty and the by vote of the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, I request that you confer upon these men the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science as appropriate in each case with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereunto. We are honored to confer upon these men the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science as appropriate in each case with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereunto. Division deans will come forward and present candidates for graduation from their respective divisions. Dr. Terry Mills.
to quote Denzel, my man. <laughs> President Franklin, it gives me great honor to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree from the Division of Humanities and Social Sciences. Gentlemen, if you would please stand and turn to your right. And if you'll place the hood on your fellow classmates standing in front of you. Gentlemen, please come forward as your name is called. Madi Abdur Rahman Magna Cum Laude. Allah de Jola. W. Adigun Magna Cum Laude. Akeem K. Egar. Valentine A. Aka. Robert S. Alexander Cum Laude. Ronald V. Allen Cum Laude. Adrian C. Bailey. Magna Cum Laude Phi Beta Kappa. Barry M. Batson. Craig O. Bellinfante Cum Laude. Sylvester A. Bell IV. Micah T. Benson. Jamal L. Boone Cum Laude. Darian C. Boy, Andrew Bradshaw, John T. Bryce, Ethan J. Brisby, cum laude, Derek L. Brown, cum laude, Gregory Q. Brown, Jordan C. Brown, Montez P. Brown Mobley, Brandon L. Bruce, Christian P. Bryant, Marquise W. Bryant, cum laude, Orson D. Burton, Jr., John T. Bynum, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Darren L. Calhoun. Aaron C. Campbell, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Christopher L. Carraway. Cedric L. Carter. Brian K. Casey, the second, Magna Cum Laude. Jason F. Kassan. Terrence J. Chandler Harrison, Cum Laude. Jacoby R. Clifton, Cum Laude. Tyrone A. Clinton, Jr., Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lamont Cobb, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Montez S. Cobb, Cum Laude. 
Mark S. Coleman Mabry, Jarrell A. Cook, Magna Cum Laude, Caleb J. Cooper, Andrew L. Cyrus, Cum Laude, Eric J. Davis, Magna Cum Laude, Malcolm A. Davis, Macharia H. Dawkins Rose, Regis V. DeVoe, Cum Laude, Modibo C. Diabate, Desmond M. Diggs, Cum Laude, Deontay D. Driscoll, Cameron Ducker, Kenneth D. Duke, Sedeke A. Dukuli, Cum Laude, Joseph Edwards, Cum Laude, Mark Edwards, Charles W. Evans, Robert E. Fitzgerald II, George W. Frazier III, Chase A. Freeman, Chaz T. Gibson, Cum Laude, Mark A. Green, Charles F. Grievous, Rondell Griffith, Cum Laude, Michael D. Gum, William A. Hambrick, Brandon C. Hamer, Jamal Hansberry, Cum Laude, David D. Harden, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Shannon G. Harden, Calvin L. Harris, Jr., Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. David E. Hart, Jarrett B. Hayes, Cum Laude. Ray C. Hayes, Jr., Cum Laude. Pieco D. Henderson. Akil F. Henje. Tyron C. Holmes. Corey M. Hood, Cum Laude. Brendan A. Hudson, Cum Laude. Xavier J. Ifield, Cum Laude. Arsante D. Jackson. Darren E. Jackson, Cum Laude. Terrence A. Jackson, Cum Laude. Eric J. Johnson. Gregory P. Johnson. Jamal T. Johnson, Cum Laude. Theodore O. Johnson, Magna Cum Laude. Thomas C. Johnson. Bobby K. Jones. Byron B. Jones, Cum Laude. Dominic J. Jones, Cum Laude. Jarrett X. Jones. Matt D. Jones, Xavier S. Keenan, Abraham J. King, Carlos A. King, Nigel C. King, Nathaniel V. Kurt, cum laude, William C. Lawrence, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. John A. Ledbetter. Frank A. Lee, Cum Laude. 
Michel A. Lesser. Jason K. Lucas, cum laude. Lyndall R. Marshall, cum laude. Brandon J. Mayweather. Christopher E. MacArthur. Tyler V. McCullough, cum laude. Tyrone E. McGowan, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Cody J. Melanson, cum laude. Dion D. Miles. John M. Mitchell. Marshawn J. Montgomery. Justin A. Moore. Mark A. Moore. Ahmad R. Mormon, magna cum laude. Kevin M. Morris, cum laude. Jamian D. Moss, cum laude. Seku S. Muhammad, magna cum laude. Kier A. Muni. Brandon L. Myers, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Corey G. Nash, cum laude. Kristen D. Newsom, cum laude. Ezoma G. Obioha. Jarrett M. O'Neill. Christopher W. Owoyemi, magna cum laude. Aaron J. Page, cum laude. Jarvis D. Patterson Askew, cum laude. Luther C. Patterson, Jr. Patton, Luther C. Patton, Jr. Kiran Pearson. Joseph E. Perry, cum laude. Corbin J. Pickett. Khalid A. Plunkett. Joshua D. Porter, cum laude. Jason M. Powell. Leon D. Qualls. Kenton Ramsey. Magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Hassan J. Rashid, cum laude. Jared C. Reese, cum laude. Michael E. Rennie, Jr., cum laude. Micah R. Richardson, cum laude. John K. Roberts, Jr. Orlando D. Roberts, cum laude. Sterling D. Roberts, Philip A. Robinson, Romero Ross, cum laude, Mark A. Russell Jr., cum laude, Johanse A. Salmon, Anthony P. Samuels, cum laude, Chad Sanders, cum laude, Damon L. Scott, cum laude. Darius Scott, cum laude. Earl B. Siegel. Cedric D. Shelton. Troy J. Shine. Louis J. Simmons, cum laude. Derek D. Smith. Edward N. Smith. Jaron D. Smith, magna cum laude. Liddell D. Smith. Brian 
A. Stone, cum laude. Jimmy B. Strong, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Virgil A. Suntar. Jason A. Terry Robinson. Berkeley C. Thomas. Terence D. Thomas. Cameron L. Titus. Kevin L. Tomlinson, cum laude. Richard L. Tucker II. Paul L. Underwood III. Leonardo S. Vieira, cum laude, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Brandon C. Waddles, cum laude. Anthony D. Walker. Jeffrey L. Washington. Devon C. Watson. Devon Watson. Tariq L. Wesley. Kawasi D. Weston, cum laude. Ravon L. Whitehead. Cameron R. Williams. Christopher A. Williams. Elijah J. Williams III, cum laude. Eric A. Williams, cum laude. George W. Williams, cum laude. Maurice A. Williams, cum laude. Richard W. Wills. Kenneth C. Wilson, cum laude. Baracus L. Wynn. Gentlemen, you may now turn your tassels. Now, gentlemen, do me one favor, please. Turn them again to the left, because that's where they should be. <laughs> turn them to the left. You may now turn your tassels. One of our majors in the Division of Humanities and Social Sciences started with the class of 2010, but his untimely death prevented him from completing this journey. We pause today to honor the, the memory of Kelvin McHale Smallwood Jones, who was an English major from Tacoma Park, Maryland. A chair drape in a maroon cloth with his name on it sits among the other graduates to recognize Kelvin's membership in the class. Would the family of Kelvin Smallwood Jones please stand to be recognized? Thank you very much. Gentlemen. The men in my life, President Franklin, it gives me great honor to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree from the Division of Business Administration and Economics. Gentlemen, 
Please stand and turn to your right and place the hood on your fellow classmate standing in front of you. Please come forward as your name is called. Muhammad M. Abdul Rahman. Lamide C. Adeosun. Mayowa A. Adeosun. Patrick O. Adewale. Timothy R. Alford, Richard Allison, Charlton C. Amos, Devon T. Anderson, Seth Anderson, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Kerubel A. Araya, cum laude, Jarrett G. Arrington, Cum laude. Justin L. Baker. Skyler C. Banks. Cum laude. Emmett C. Barney. Ryan J. Bates. Madnya cum laude. Phi Beta Kappa. Jared E. Benton. Cum laude. Jared M. Benton. Leonte B. Benton, Edward A. Bolden, Jamel Book, Patrick C. Brooks, Douglas A. Brown, Jasper T. Brown, Anthony S. Brundage, Brandon E. Burbage, Aaron D. Burwell, cum laude, DeCarlos B. Butler, Jelani A. Kane, Rogero J. Caldas, cum laude, Don D. Carter, the second, magna cum laude, Andrew E. Charles, Lamar D. Chestnut, John E. Chisel, Frederick U. Clark III, cum laude, Stephen D. Clark, Desmond L. Cobo, cum laude, Benjamin C. Collier, cum laude, Darius J. Copeland, cum laude, Brian E. Copper, Alfonso J. Cosby, Jarriet T. Crockett, cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Raymond A. Cryer, cum laude. Deferrin C. Culpepper, cum laude. Siobhan S. Cunningham. Stephen D. Darling, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Julian M. Davis, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Cole E. Davis, cum laude. 
Trenton E. Dockery, cum laude. Eric K. Early, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Ivan M. Eberhardt. Hardy C. Faison, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Ahmad R. Falahi, cum laude. Jerry P. Felder. Michael G. Fields. Brent C. Ford. Evan W. Fowler, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Ronnie T. Francis. Dominique K. Fuller. Nicholas A. Fuller, Randall L. Gaines, Ryan B. Gates, Jelani L. Glapion, cum laude, Zachary A. Grace, cum laude, Nicholas Hall, Stefan B. Hall, cum laude. Charles C. Hampton, cum laude. Derek P. Hayes. Jared E. Hill, cum laude. Donis A. Hodges. Joshua A. Holly. Justin T. Hauser. Thais Huddleston, cum laude. Tariq J. Jackson. Jarrell J. James. Jelani D. James, cum laude. Kevin W. James, Jr., cum laude. Matthew S. Jenkins. Christopher S. Jennings. Brandon M. Johnson, cum laude. Jonathan B. Johnson, cum laude. Najee A. Johnson, cum laude. Glenn Johnson, Jr. Jonathan L. Jolly, cum laude. Byron A. Jones, cum laude. Isaiah N. Jones. Taquan D. Jones, magna cum laude. Brendan G. Jordan. Arlen J. Kelly Hennings, cum laude. Abraham K. Kiprotic. Brendan J. Lindsay. Antonio D. Lockett. Jason D. Low, cum laude. Winston D. Mackey. Tahir S. Majun. Avery N. Maroney. John P. McFadden, cum laude. Ronaldo R. McGee, cum laude. Kevin J. McGowan. Christopher M. McHenry. Jerome R. Menifee. Everett D. Miles, cum laude. Conrad A. Miles, cum laude. Brian A. Mobley, cum laude. Jonathan B. Moore. Kelvin Moore. Matthew C. Moore, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Lance C. Morrow, cum laude. Lorenzo I. Newman. Amir Inga, cum laude. Timothy L. Norris, cum laude. K. 
Kevin E. Inzua, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Baron E. Ojoho, Cum Laude. Nelson T. Oliver. Anthony R. Orange. Paul W. Orange, Cum Laude. Jermaine T. Ate, Cum Laude. Richard R. Owuzu, Michael C. Payne, Ian D. Pemberton, Christopher N. Pender, Brian E. Presley, Cum Laude, Christian N. Reagan, Matthew A. Rice, Cum Laude, Aaron Richard, cum laude. Brian J. Richardson, magna cum laude. Larry D. Richardson, cum laude. Herman L. Riley III, cum laude. Marcus J. Roberts, cum laude. Jason F. Robinson. Brian J. Rogers. Robert G. Ross, cum laude. Jason A. Ruiz, cum laude. Francis M. Rutledge III. Caleb E. Samuels. Bryson L. Scott, cum laude. Durrell B. Scott, cum laude. Kenneth R. Scott. Lawrence M. Scott III, John A. Searles III, Barrett E. Simmons, cum laude, Melvin K. Sirleaf, Alan D. Smith, cum laude, Alexander J. Smith, cum laude, Brandon L. Smith, Jacques T. Smith, Kelsey M. Smith, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, John Christopher Sowles, Stephen V. Stansel, Cum Laude, Robin K. Standifer, Jr., James A. Stevens, Lance A. Stewart, cum laude, Julian E. Street, Leslie M. Sungwa Mills, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Kelvin J. Taylor, cum laude, Matthew S. Tenen, Harrison W. Thomas, Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Sherman S. Thomas. Jared R. Thompson. Marcus L. Trailer. Kevin M. Tribble, Cum Laude. Jarvis D. Wade, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Jordan Ware. Ronnie L. Washington, Jr., Magna Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Wayne J. Watson. Nicholas J. Webb. Jamie B. White, Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Kassan D. White. Marlon A. White. Jason H. Williams, cum laude. Kishan O. Williams, cum laude. Kurt M. Williams. Maurice M. Williams, Jr. Theodore L. Williams, cum laude. Carlton B. Willits, cum laude. Nicholas K. Wisdom. Stephen D. Wooten, 
Jared A. Wright, Mel Christopher Young, Michael R. Young, cum laude. Uh, gentlemen, you may now turn your tassels. <laughs> gentlemen, you may be seated. As with the, the Division of Humanities and Social Sciences, one of the students in the Division of Business and Economics, who started with the class of 2010, untimely death precluded him from completing the journey. Therefore, we also pause, pause today to honor the memory of Mr. David Rodell Board II who was a business administration major from Milton, Tennessee. A chair draped in a maroon cloth sits alongside that of the chair of Kevin to likewise recognize David's membership in the class. At this time, we would like to ask the family members of Mr. David Ward II to please stand and be recognized. Thank you. President Franklin, it gives me great honor to present the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree and Bachelor of Science degree from the Division of Science and Mathematics. <laughs> Gentlemen, please stand, turn to your right, and place the hood on your fellow classmates standing in front of you. Please come forward as your name is called. Sajad Abdulatif. Asemelu O Aburime Manya Laude. Andrew D. Adams. Marcus D. Akedo, Sharif A. Amin Ra, Willie E. Armstead, Jordan J. Atkins, Magna Cum Laude, Alimu Ba, Summa Cum Laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Jabari M. Bailey, Cum laude. Darius E. Ball. Jamal Z. Bankhead. Harrison J. Barnes, cum laude. Carl J. Becker. Marcus Blackwell, Jr., cum laude. 
Dwayne L. Booker III, Harry J. Bowden Jr., cum laude, Walter Bradley, Xavier S. Brandon, cum laude, Ryan R. Brewer, Horace S. Brown II, Joe Bryant, cum laude, Sean C. Burnett, cum laude, Gordon Brett H. Burroughs, cum laude, Demario M. Butts, cum laude, David I. Bird, cum laude, Timothy O. Campbell, Eric R. Castle, Warren W. Chancellor, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Ronald E. Clary Jr., cum laude, Andrew J. Colbert, Paul K. Collins, cum laude, Frank G. Conyers, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Jacques Corey Cormier, cum laude, Andres Cortez, cum laude, Bernard Coxton Jr., cum laude, Marcus R. Crittenden, cum laude, David Y. Dade, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Jonathan M. Daly, cum laude, Khalid T. David, cum laude, Gregory K. Davis, magna cum laude, Paul C. Delissa, cum laude, Abel T. Demise, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Shay T. DeShields, Desmond C. Douglas, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Jonathan Edwards, cum laude, Andre C. Ellis, cum laude, Jeremy T. Ezel, Daryl J. Fields, cum laude, Michael B. Fisher, cum laude, Akil Y. Foluke, cum laude, Frederick J. Garner, cum laude, Christopher K. Garrett, cum laude, Jason Gathers, summa cum laude, Eric J. Gittins, Christopher E. Glinton, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa, Larry J. Gomez, cum laude, Philip B. Gordon, cum laude, Jonathan A. Green, Vaughn M. Greer, magna cum laude, Jonathan M. Griffin, summa cum laude, Christopher A. Gidry, magna cum laude, Mark L. Gum, Tesfa Haile, cum laude, Michael a. Harrell, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Weldon C. Harris. Kemet Hewitt, magna cum laude. David A. Hill, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Dijon D. Hill, cum laude. Jonathan D. Hill, Jonathan A. Hush, cum laude, DeAndre L. Howard, cum laude, Michael B. Hurst, cum laude, John Mark Hinman, magna cum laude, 
Christopher A. Igbogwe. Frank E. Jackson, cum laude. Justin D. Jeffries, cum laude. Nolan B. Jeter. Jamie Johnson, magna cum laude. Jordan M. Johnson. Jason M. Jones, cum laude. Antoine Lankford, cum laude. Manuel M. Lewis. Jamal L. Little. Eddie G. Lewis. Brandon C. Luckett, magna cum laude. Brandon P. Mayer, magna cum laude. Dorian J. Mayer, magna cum laude. Yannick M. Matthews, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Leonard T. Mathis, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Adam M. McFarlane, cum laude. Andrew T. McGee, cum laude. Carlton R. McGee, Jr. Walter John H. McGowan, magna cum laude. Leondis S. McIver, magna cum laude. Terrence a. McKnight, cum laude. Brian P. McLeod. Jarrett K. Mills. Kevin S. Minot. Eddie L. Moat. Christopher G. Neely, summa cum laude. Van R. Newkirk. Cum laude. T. L. Newsom, cum laude. Inkosane Nasakere, cum laude. Brian Wanunu, cum laude. Moyosore B. Adeyemi, cum laude. Olatunde O. Oso, cum laude. John R. Pamplin II, cum laude. Willie L. Parker, cum laude. Marcus L. Penny, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. David G. Poyer, cum laude. Marcus L. Price. Damian R. Prince. Joshua D. Ramsour, Lawrence P. Rapier, Michael J. Rawlings, cum laude, David C. Roberts, magna cum laude, Michael S. Roberts, magna cum laude, Mitchell B. Rogers, cum laude, Justin A. Romeo, magna cum laude, Hailey T. Russum, Cedric K. Samuel, summa cum laude, David B. Sanders II, cum laude, Imano Sipo Jr., cum laude, Robin Sharma, cum laude, Kwame J. Shihai, William Shipman III, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Edward C. Short. Christopher N. Simon. Jerry L. Smith. Brandon T. Stanley, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. David C. Stanley.
Mark B. Starks, magna cum laude. Noble A. Swint. Wayne A. Taliaferro, magna cum laude. James L. Taylor. Matthew K. Timba, cum laude. Alan R. Thomas, magna cum laude. Stefan O. Thomas. Kenneth Thompson. Christopher K. Trailer, cum laude. Carl M. Truesdale, summa cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Chaka O. Tyson. Chenua T. Umoja. John C. Walker, Jr., magna cum laude. Tyrell K. Walker. Antonio S. Ward IV. Brandon Warner. Claude Weaver. Brian J. White. James R. White. Christopher M. Williams. Gary T. Williams, cum laude. Joshua D. Williams. Justin Williams. Bobby L. Wilson, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Dennis S. Woods. Keith C. Woods. Xavier L. Young, cum laude. Thomas M. Zgambo. Gentlemen, you may now turn your tassel. Please be seated. And now to induct our newest graduates into the ranks of the alumni. Please welcome the president of Morehouse College National Alumni Association, Mr. Philip McCall, a member of the class of 1969 and a member of the Morehouse College Board of Trustees, who will administer the charge of loyalty and support. Please, President McCall. And now, would all members of the Morehouse College class of 2010 please stand. No institution of higher education can be stronger than its alumni. Therefore, those who have earned their degrees and accepted the honor of becoming a Morehouse graduate must reach back and give back in support of the ongoing mission of their institution. I am confident that you will assist those in our community and indeed the world who are striving to achieve what you have already accomplished. Therefore, by the authority vested in me, as president of the National Alumni Association, I am pleased to induct you into the Morehouse College National Alumni Association with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities 
of a distinguished Morehouse man. Remember, when a Morehouse man bears the insignia of a Morehouse graduate, he is expected to do exceptionally well. In fact, we will not accept anything less. We hope you will represent us well and play a very active role in supporting both your alumni association and your college forever. Gentlemen, welcome to the Brotherhood of Morehouse Men. Good luck and Godspeed. You may be seated. Thank you, Philip. ROTC officer cadets, will you please come forward at this time for the commissioning ceremony? Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense Gates will now come forward and commission our newest military officers. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I Having been appointed an officer in the Armed Forces of the United States, and having been appointed an officer in the Armed Forces of the United States, United States do, solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will will and faithfully discharge. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office. The duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. Upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Gentlemen, this will be my final word before I introduce to give you the charge and send you forth into the world, our distinguished alumnus who was president of the SGA in his, during his time. Before Congressman Sanford Bishop comes, I wish simply to say to you, as Dr. Massey said, you were the class here to greet me and Cheryl when we arrive. And I thank you, gentlemen, for your patience and for your grace. Your class, your senior president, Jonathan Jolly, has charged you to give back to the college. You've heard the challenge from Dr. Wilson and President Philip McCall. Gentlemen, be generous to your college. Morehouse depends upon you. And go forth as Renaissance men with social conscience. Show the children of the world what it means to be young, gifted, and black. Gentlemen, you have taught our community that you can be cool and smart. Teach them the five wells, that they too can be well-read, well-spoken, well-traveled, well-dressed, and well-balanced. Go forth as the mighty and magnificent Men of Morehouse, class of 2010, and be disturbed by mediocrity. Do not sleep well in the presence of injustice. You must raise the social justice question if no one else at the table raises it. 
be true to Morehouse. And now I bring to offer this final word, commissioning you into the world, Congressman Sanford Bishop, who delivers this challenge. And you should know that in 1974, more than 36 years ago, Morehouse College honored his father, alumnus Sanford D. Bishop Sr., 1932, with an honorary degree. Today, Morehouse honors its sons. And Congressman Bishop, you have been a friend to Morehouse. You have guided us on Capitol Hill. You have been a conscience of the Congress. Will you come now and send these men down from this red hill with substance, style, and spirituality? <clears throat> that you, members of the class of 2010, are now in your last minutes as students of Morehouse College, reflects great credit upon you, and I congratulate you upon your signal achievement. You have impressed those who, over the past few years, have been charged with the responsibility of guiding you through your respective curricula with the sincerity of your purpose, the thoroughness of your preparation, the tenacity of your execution, and the completion of all the requirements for the degrees conferred upon you today. You have worked hard. You have persevered. You have survived. Take pride in your accomplishments. Most of you came here as boys. But today, you leave as men, Morehouse men. But at this joyous, pristine moment, as the final curtain falls on your student days at Morehouse, it is my solemn duty and obligation to charge and convict you with the obligations and responsibilities that you must now assume as Morehouse graduates. Since 1867, Morehouse College has sent forth generation after generation of men, for the most part African-American men, motivated and inspired to use the tools and preparation gained here to take leadership in meeting the challenges faced by humankind from Reconstruction to Jim Crow, to civil rights to voting rights, from the outhouse to the White House, in every field of human endeavor, Morehouse has sent forth her sons to make a difference in this world. The Morehouse faculty has prepared you. Most of you will go on to graduate and professional schools, law and medicine, science and technology, engineering and mathematics, business and finance, teaching and religion, music and literature, history and sports. Some have entered the military. Others will enter the workforce. But class of 2010, wherever you go or whatever you do, please know that as a Morehouse man, you are marked. Your DNA is now marked. Marked with an air of expectation. As a Morehouse man, you are expected to be highly competent in whatever you pursue, to pursue it with excellence. You are expected to succeed. I charge and convict you that as a Morehouse man, you are expected to have integrity and to be honest in all your dealings. I charge and convict you that regardless of your level of success financially, that as a Morehouse man, you are expected to have compassion for those less fortunate and to provide service to your community. 
For truly, service is the rent we pay for the space we occupy on this earth. I charge and convict you to use the tools, preparation, and resources that come to you in life to in some way address the crisis of the African-American male as a mentor, surrogate parent, role model, or benefactor, you must develop our boys into strong, responsible men, just as Morehouse has helped to develop you. Finally, I charge you to support the college by actively identifying and recruiting promising young men to attend Morehouse by strengthening and maintaining the bonds of brotherhood that all Morehouse men share, and by giving liberally of your finances to support the college's mission. More than any other, I charge and convict you to love, nurture, and support your families in times of triumph and times of challenge. My dear young people, my dear Morehouse men, none of these things will be easy and none should be taken lightly by you. But upon your faithful performance of them depends the life and future of Morehouse College. The torch is now passed. It is now in your hands. Go forth with God's blessings and wear the name well. God bless you. The Reverend Dr. Miller, the 126th Commencement Convocation of Morehouse College is now concluded. Please stand for the singing of the college hymn, Dear Old Morehouse, after which Dean Lawrence Edward Carter Sr. will give the benediction. Please be seated for the final prayer. <clears throat> Let us pray. And now, dear God, 
Thou who art the breath of our breathing, whose spirit neither comes nor goes, who has brought us to this yard of triumphant joy to be a beneficial presence on the earth. Send us forth on a purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose, to multiply the consciousness of the Christ, the all good. Like our most recent ancestors, dear Lord, we aspire nobly like Lena Horn, adventure daringly like Benjamin Hooks, and serve humbly like Dorothy Height. We seek the majesty inherent in our full acceptance of the humanity in people of diversity. We seek peace beyond security and activate comprehensive compassion toward all nature as divine, as one energy event, one journey, and one story. We are willing to boldly trust in God and bravely press on, not looking for validation, but being great validators of all that is real. We seek to be like a Pentecost and speak with new tongues, soaring from glory to God's greater glory. Shout, for tomorrow is today, and today is forever in God. And say amen. <laughs>